Gears, the news updates on African News TV, and I'm Deborah Eze. We begin from the Gambia, where investigators urge Gambia's government to pursue criminal charges against those responsible for crimes committed under ex dictator Yaya Jamer. In a long awaited report handed to the president on Thursday, rights groups have long pushed for prosecutions for the litany of alleged abuses, such as use of death squads committed during Jamer's 22 year rule which ended in 2017. The final report of the Truth, Reconciliation and Reparations Commission was originally scheduled for release in July, but has been delayed several times. And moving on in Ethiopia, the criticism of Western countries' perceived involvement in the Ethiopian civil war rose to new levels on Thursday, when thousands of protesters marched on the American and British embassies in the Ethiopian capital, Addis Ababa. Protesters called on U.S. President Joe Biden to revise his foreign policy and accused foreign governments of planning to dismantle the sovereignty of Ethiopia. Demonstrations came a day after the Ethiopian government announced that Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed traveled to the front lines of the battle against fighters from the Tigray region. And in Sudan, Sudanese security forces fired tear gas Thursday at thousands of protesters who rallied against a deal that saw the Prime Minister reinstate after his ouster in a military coup last month, witness said. Demonstrators in the capital, Khartoum, chanted, the people want the downfall of the regime. While in the capital's twin city, others shouted, power to the people, a civilian government is the people's choice. And now we head to Nigeria, where the federal government may deduct at least 2.4 trillion naira from the Federation account to fund the 5,000 naira cash palliative that will be handed over to 40 million poor Nigerians after the fuel subsidy has been removed next year. This is just as lens on Thursday that the list of poor Nigerians on the federal government's national social register has surpassed 42 million and may hit 43 million by December. This implies that the figure to be spent on the subsidy palliative may hit 2.58 trillion naira in one year. Now, these revenue generating agencies are expected to remit a specified amount of their revenue to the Federation account, which will be distributed among the three tiers of government. And still in Nigeria, civil society organizations yesterday charged the federal government and security agencies to desist forthwith from harassing and intimidating victims of the hashtag NSAS protest, especially those who testified at the Lagos State Judicial Panel of Inquiry. Speaking at a media briefing in Lagos under the aegis of civil society voices for the hashtag NSAS victims, they lamented that the Lagos state, which has been the epicenter of the struggle against the structural injustice in the country and center of the tragedy of the hashtag NSAS protest, failed to live up to expectations this time. And now we head to the foreign scene where Britain on Thursday said it was concerned by newly identified coronavirus variants spreading in South Africa that might make vaccine less effective and imperil efforts to fight the pandemic. The UK Health Security Agency said the variant, which is called B.1.1.529, has a spike protein that was dramatically different to the one in the original coronavirus that COVID-19 vaccines are based on. The variant was first identified at the start of this week, but Britain rushed to introduce travel restrictions on South Africa and five neighboring countries acting more swiftly than with the current dominant Delta variant. And still on the foreign scene, India issued an advisory to all states to rigorously test and screen international travelers from South Africa and others at risk countries amid concerns over a new coronavirus variant after easing some of its travel restrictions earlier this month. And also, a Turkish court on Friday will hold the latest hearing in the trial of a philanthropist businessman Osman Kavala, whose case provoked a diplomatic tussle between Ankara and its Western allies after the code for his immediate release. The trial of the Kavala, who has been in jail without conviction for more than four years, has been criticized as politically motivated and symbolic of a crackdown on dissent under President Tayyip Erdogan. And on the sports scene, Ralph Ragnick is close to finalizing a deal to become Manchester United interim manager until the end of the season. Discussions are ongoing over a deal that would also see Rangnick remain at the club for two years beyond the end of the season in a consultancy role. And still on the sports scene, the warning signs were there starting Tottenham right in the staring Tottenham right in the face on Sunday 
fortunate to head into the interval only a goal down against Leeds, Spurs with the help of Antonio Conte's historic from the sideline. Managed to secure their fourth victory since onto Espirito Santos' sacking with a spirited comeback. And that's all we can take on news updates today. For more updates on our news and programs, do ensure to follow all our social media platforms displaying on your screen. And also visit our website on www.africanet.tv. Once again, I'm Deborah Eze. Have a beautiful weekend.